Um, never, never stop speaking. You've got plenty to say. <laughs> never stop speaking. Okay, so my hands are here. Jazz hands. Um, Chantelle, I wanted to thank you so much for um, inviting me on your platform. I thought that was um, surprising and kind. So I'm not sure how you want to talk or what you want to talk about, but I'm available. <laughs> and I always remember being this because there was not a lot of representation in Buffy and there was not a lot of representation at the time. That was ninety that remember. was probably nineteen ninety I'm aging myself now, that's about two thousand, you're right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And I always remember just being this black goddess who was <gasps> just beautiful and powerful and oh my goodness, I was like, wow. But you didn't have a scouse accent because no, no, I think I, I think I, I, who was it? Olivia, oh yes, Olivia was, yes, she was, I, it was, I call it my vague England, because when you, when you live in America, I lived in America for a long time, they couldn't deal yeah. with, they couldn't deal with Scouse then, they wouldn't have been able to understand yeah. it, so I did sort of posh vague England, <laughs> RP, yeah. it's, RP it's called, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. So it, it was a brilliant accent, and so I didn't know that you were from Liverpool, and then obviously as the years went by, I thought you've done radio presenting, you've done modelling, you've done acting in Hollyoaks and Footballers Live, and then obviously I saw you on Liverpool platforms, and then I heard your accent, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be amazing, but you've got to get down, like, me love for you, just going through the roof, oh. Well, I love I, I I love your fangirl mode. Thank you. I appreciate. Yeah, and then anytime I see you, you always see me face. Just like, ah, oh, you're just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I just, and your career's gone from strength to strength. So I'm going to talk you about a few of the projects that you have done and are working on at the moment. If that's okay. That's perfect. Thank you. Brilliant. The first one would be you've got two books out at the moment. The first one is Jacob Jacobo, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. You're slaughtering it. You're, you're slaughtering it. Can I help you? It's Italian. It's Jacobo. Jacobo. It's like Jacob O. Jacobo. And and yeah. the reason and the reason why it's I did want to name that people would do exactly what you did that over Jacobo Jacob Jacobo. Uh uh. Because that's what our names yeah. are like, aren't they? Black names are like yeah. that. People are like Fina, which is phonetic P H I N A. I've had yeah. to explain my whole life. They can get Philip, but somehow Fina eludes them. So it's Jacobo. Yeah. Go, go, go on, go on, go on. I'm so naughty, sorry. Jacobo. So Jacob Jacobo, football star, which is the first book, and then Jacob Jacobo on lockdown. And these books are brilliant for many reasons. There are many reasons these books are brilliant. One is that it's Liverpool based. Thank you. Another is that it's a young boy who is of mixed heritage, but there are quite strong links to the Nigerian community and the Nigerian families and another is in the second book particularly the link in with lockdown and the current civil rights movement so I just wanted to talk to you a bit about those books if that's okay for you know? oh it's please you've, you've just fangirled me and now you want to talk about my writing how about, how much love do I have for you <laughs> of course take it away girl whatever you want to know what do you want to know? <laughs> oh, you're just the best. Um, so you both are based in Liverpool. Yeah. And like, there's well, a lot of scouts here. Um, <laughs> to you, how important was it that the books were based here? Well, you know, um, I live here. I write what I know. I have been in the arts entertainment world for 25 years and it was a difficult <laughs> thing for me to get involved in simply because initially... I didn't think I was allowed to. Does that make sense? I didn't think that I was allowed to succeed. I didn't know I was allowed to be an actor. I had no value if because I, I wasn't seeing myself represented on television. I wasn't really reading myself represented in books. I was read. I'm a massive reader, 
So I, I just needed to make sure that now I have the opportunity that I can represent us. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I have a son, I have a 12 year old son and he's a total scouser all day. He's hilarious. And, um, yeah. like most 12 year old boys, he ain't got no interest in reading. So it, my book is a love song to my son, Paolo, because he's a football, he's a footballer and I wanted him to read during lockdown. So that was the genesis of how it all began. Yeah, he's, he, he, he is, but he is. And some of the things that have happened to Paolo have also happened to Jacobo, but they're not the same person. And it's really strange because I used Paolo as the basis of all the illustrations which I did, I created. And so uh, people keep saying, oh, congratulations on the success of your book about your son. And I'm like, it's not about my son. But he inspired certainly the first one. His journey was very yeah. similar to the, you know, he's been to both academies, he's signed with one of the academies, he's played at Goodison, he's a goal scorer, so there are a lot of similarities. Um, yeah, um, But I, 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 oh, okay, I'm so proud of him, but he ain't easy. <laughs> he's a child, <laughs> he's a child, so I'm so proud of him, but he, like me, he's not easy. So I need, I, you know, I need all the pillars in place my mum's moved back into the city, so I'm really grateful to have her. He's got his nan. Nan's down here now, so yeah, I'm proud of him. But the book, the book primarily has to be Scouse. We've got so much richness. We've got so much talent. Our kids, our youth are talented, you know? Our city is majestic. I don't th I've lived all over the world, so I can honestly say there's no better place in the world to live but Liverpool, despite what we've been through racially and otherwise. I love it here. So of course I would set it here. You know what I mean? I completely agree with you. And I love what you said about having, like, I've got a 13 year old. Oh. I like it, what you said about oh, time to get them to read. Oh. But also having representation. And I think I'm getting those books for my son. Yay! Oh, Thank you. Yeah, it's not, as, as, although I can read it as an adult, and I think it reaches a lot of communities. It's not exclusive to the black community. No, it, it isn't. I'm getting those books for my it is, it is an exclusive for the black community, but how often, I'm a massive reader, so I've, ev I've read everything from Homer's Iliad through Of Mice and Men, through all manner of books. Some have slapped me in the face racially, some have lifted me. So it, it shouldn't be a stretch that if the protagonist is black, that anyone can read and enjoy it. And what I've found, uh, people literally buy the book and send me a picture of them holding the book. It's all over my Instagram account. And I've got people in Japan. I've got people in North Carolina. I got girls. I got someone from Georgia. I got a teacher in New York. I got a teacher down under. And my head's gone. Because what I'm learning is we've got to trust that we have something to say and start to say it. And it's self-published. I published it on Amazon. Because I find that people who... Um, the people who make the decisions do not understand the story that needs to be told often. They're coming from a completely different background. They're, they're normally the Chelsea set, you know, they all have a lot of power in the publishing world. So you've just got to get up and get on it. And I want your boy to read it. I haven't got time necessarily to wait for some girl in London to tell me that I have the right and a good idea to write a book about people in Liverpool, it's not going to work. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's not going to yeah, work. Completely agree. Uh, yeah. We don't have time for that. That's why you're making this. That's why I stepped to it because I said she hasn't got time to try and wait for the powers that be in London to tell her it's okay for her to express herself. No, we haven't got time for that. That's why all this technology is our friend. It's our friend because yeah. now we can say, I mean, my friend Patrick, as soon as my book came out, Patrick Graham, he said, Fee, Oh my God, what, 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 what? And I encouraged him, I told him precisely what, he, what I did. And he's got a book out. I told him yeah. precisely what I did. I love that, so Jacobo's had two babies. He only came out in March. He's had my other baby, Jacobo, on lockdown. 
and he's got Patrick Graham's um, Three Little Jamaicans. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be pushing it out and telling people how to do it and expanding the network, no? 100%. They can't help it. They can't help it. Thank you. Well, I needed inspiration. Like I said, when I was growing up, um, I didn't dare dream I wanted to be an actor, but I was definitely different. <laughs> my siblings and my mother can attest to the fact that anyone who knows me, you know, they say, ah, Fina's off her head. But actually, I was an artist emerging, but I didn't know that because I didn't have anything to look on. Now, a great thing happened for, a great thing happened for me. Kathy Tyson, who is um, a fantastic... BAFTA Award nominated actress and a fantastic human, was a family friend. She was friends with my older brother and sister. And then all of a sudden, she's on screen in Mona Lisa. That's the first time I actually connected that I could do it. Only because I knew her. I was like, what? 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 Really? And that, that, that set a seed. So if I write a book for a child and the child gets the message at 10, They've got years on me. They've got years on me to get yeah. going. They've got years on me to get out there and figure out their own way. And actually, Chantel, what you're doing with your BLM platform is you're also saying, because there's some 14 year old girl in her bedroom in Prescott who's mixed heritage and she might not be living around her black family. She might be living around the white half of the family. And she might be hanging off the edge of Facebook looking at what you put out going someday. That's why you're doing it. Someday. Yeah some day that's what it's for yeah. I, I, I'm look I'm way beyond um, oh my god I'm in this film oh my god I'm in that film when I was 25 that is how I thought I'm not gonna lie I did this I did that I was pleased with it I'm into legacy yeah. now I'm into legacy what can I leave behind how can I contribute to my boy to your boy to my community now I might not be standing next year in the march but I'll be writing a book do you understand? Yeah. Because I have a different call because yeah. I'm an artist. So my call is to talk. My call is to write. So, and the thing is, let me tell you something. If they block you because you get too yeah. truthful, which has happened to me yeah. before in Liverpool, everyone knows the story. I don't need to go into it. I can guarantee I will shape shift. So if I cannot act, I will have a radio show. If I can no longer have my radio show, I will write for the echo if i can no longer write for the echo i will write a book if i can't write a book i'll do a one woman show that's just how we do it because we've got to tell yeah. people what blackness looks like from a northwestern pan-african point of view and be truthful whether people want to hear it or not and the irony is the great people white and black do want to hear it yeah so yeah. there's a myth people, people gaslight you and pretend to you that that there's no they gaslight you and they pretend to you that there's no place for what you offer. Do you understand? Yeah. So they'll, I'll put in a script to a company, I don't need to say who, and they'll come back and go, hmm, they take six weeks to come back and then yeah. they'll come back and say, hmm, um, well, 
we need you need to go through this 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 process they know that's going to take you a year and when you if if you listen to their voice you stop listening to your own and then you create something that doesn't ring true my greatest compliment is that you read the book as a black scouse woman and see yeah. its uh, power and its aspirational, inspirational. My job's done. I don't need some chick in yeah. London that I don't know to tell me nothing. You understand? Yeah. And, and that's yeah. where I'm coming from. If the boys, <laughs> one boy, uh, I'll remain nameless because, you know, everyone's local. I don't want to get it. One of the boys is my little favourite. It's my mate's son. He went... Yeah. He's a mixed race. He went to me. Good dish, you know. That's it. That's it. He's 12. Yeah. Good dish, you know. I'm like, I, I can take that to the bank. I can I can do a cartwheel based on that. You get me. I had another little white boy. Yeah. Blonder than blonder than blonde. He's in one of Paolo's football team. I've known him since he's six. He's now 12. He barely has spoken to me. He's that shy. He's a lion on the pitch, but he's dead shy in life. He went, yeah. Fina, I like your I like your football book. I went, oh. you know what they're like at that age? You get mm, yeah. mm, mm, out of them. I got two sentences out of two kids. My work is done. <laughs> you know? <laughs> My work is done. My work is done, girl. Oh. because I'm living it I wrote it because yeah. I'm living it I wrote it because your boy's living it you're living it you can't take kids yeah. and lock them down for 20 weeks or however long we were locked down take them out of school which at first is like yeah and then it gets yeah. old right because now you're yeah. doing now you're doing your school in the house now all of a sudden yeah. you're very busy parents are teachers I ain't no teacher can I tell you a funny story it's an aside but it'll lead yeah. back to something good Mom, mom, what? Well, no, shall I pretend to be a nicer mother than I am or just tell the truth? Okay, let me just tell the truth. Mom, mom, what? Can you help me with my own way? Now, listen to me. This, let me tell you something right, because I really don't want to do it. So I'm going, let me tell you something right. I, 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 I'm not a teacher, right? I went to school 35 years ago, right? I just went straight off. This is day one. Day one, <laughs> day one, right? I went straight off. Ra, 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 ra. Da, 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 da. You know, mother of the year over here, right? And I go, look, I got that. He waited. His comic timing is deadly. And I go, so I can't help you. All right, well, I'll be in the classroom with you. You know, all that. And he goes, mum, it's drama. <sighs> this is who I'm raising. This is who I'm raising yeah. as yeah. a single parent. This is him. He's so clever. Yeah. There's not, he knows. There is nothing I can say that, like, I can't tell him I don't know nothing about drama. It came with this yeah. little triumphant look in his face, like this look. <laughs> and he made me read the, made me read the other side of something. Then, yeah. that, you know, and I'm not a teacher because I'm not patient enough to be a teacher. But I suddenly realised my son's looking for me to help him through this mess, this morass yeah. right now. And so yeah. if just fed right into my Jacobo books, that's why the other one came out so fast. Too much went on. And then yeah. my son was agitated. I was racially agitated all the time. Um, yeah. I'm a massive listener of podcasts and I'm a massive, you know, I'm like radio, radio, podcast, podcast, anything. I like listening. Yeah. 
largely because watching drama on television is not restful for me because it's my job. You know, if it's a great job drama, but everything suddenly was because Black Lives Matter and it felt a little commercial to me and it felt a little convenient to me. And I feel like, so this is, this is the full coffee, right? There's a coffee, yet a cappuccino has got a froth on top, okay? Yeah. And I felt like the people, not the black folks, not the community, not the protesters, but the commercial end of it felt a little decorative. I felt like they didn't have any skin in the game, so they can yeah. kind of like get into this amazing, um, they can get into this amazing talk for a couple of weeks yeah. and go away, yeah. right? Yeah. Now there was one thing in Jacobo on lockdown that was real. I was going past Pinter's Park gates. And yeah. I saw a man that I know, and again, I don't want to name him because I don't know how these things affect people, okay? So I saw a man that I know and have much respect for, an elder from the community, and he was standing there with a yeah. sign that said, I'm not okay on it. Yeah. And I couldn't pass him then. Do you understand? Yeah. I couldn't pass him. Yeah. I couldn't pass him. I don't know what my response to uh, the George Floyd thing was going to be. I didn't know yeah. what I didn't know what I was going to do. To be honest, I was just agitated. And then yeah. it came to speak to him, and that in fact that ended up sort of a version of that ended up in the book because my son saw that, and my son saw yeah. what he can do, the protest and the thing. But then in the yeah. book the the character because they're not us the character in the book is too afraid to actually go the mother yeah because you and i both know race is one of the most evocative things on the planet so yeah. my book isn't saying take your 12 year old or your 10 year old to a blm march but my book is saying you better guide your son through it your daughter through it there's got to be a time when you give them the talk Definitely. The, the talk. Yeah. The, the, the talk. You know, you get the talk. Yeah. You say, my child has been raised in a way of great shelteredness. Because he's a footballer, he spends a lot of time in an academy. He spends a lot of time yeah. um, in school. And on around that, I keep him busy. I just think, yeah. you know... He's busy. And so it was interesting to me, George Floyd's death, he saw that. I couldn't prevent that. He's got an Instagram account. He saw that. That's not something I would let him see, actually. But he saw that. And his reaction was one... Oh, I think at first he thought it was a movie. I think I thought it was this. It was so interesting to me, in a sad way, to see a 12-year-old boy try to understand why the life of a black person is taken by somebody that yeah. he feels should protect him. And yeah. that really, his reaction and my coping with his reaction and trying to yeah. help him and realizing that, am I doing a great thing by sort of keeping him, not out of the world, but so, so protected. I realized I got to arm him first with knowledge so that i mean he could not believe that the man died because he was brown he kept saying because he's brown it didn't make it yeah. see we are desensitized unfortunately to racism in order to get through the day yeah. would you not agree yeah right yeah you know if if we weren't we'd be sobbing and walking around wounded all the time now it's not yeah. to say that we're not wounded but we hold the yeah. trauma in a different way so that we can get up and get on with it um, yeah. my husband was from Italy and I'm divorced now, but he used to send me all these guardian, this black, that all these horrendous stories every day, you know, because it was yeah. all new to him. And I said, yeah. it's very painful. I, I don't want it every day. And so yeah. it's that whole thing of now my son is waking up to the fact that I'm not equal. And I go, you are equal in the eyes of the Lord, but the eyes of the Lord isn't everywhere. So I'm going to have to yeah. give you some strategies. So that's the book I wrote because I realized yeah. if George Floyd hadn't have passed, 
I wouldn't have had that conversation with my son because it's too painful for me. But I suddenly realized it was a clarion call. We have to equip them. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, I completely agree. And it's, it's heartbreaking because we want to tell our children that not, and we do we tell our children that nothing in this life can stop them. But as mothers of boys who are mixed heritage and, you know, carers of boys who are black, we, like, like you say, we have to, part of protecting them, we have to have a conversation with them and, and tell them, you know what, we, we know you can be a and we know you're beautiful and we know you're creative and we know you are talented, but the world doesn't always know that. Yeah, either. the world, it, it, it's the, it's, Chantelle, it's the fine balance, isn't it, between the world may not always know that or the world may not always yeah. see that, but that does not mean that you're not that. That's what I'm yeah. trying to... That's, that's where I was going with the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have had lots of mentors. I've been blessed to have lots of mentors. As an artist, you just need them. You need people who've gone before you in the land of artistry. Yeah. Kathy Tyson is a mentor to this day. But I've had a lot of white mentors. Yeah. I've had a lot of male mentors. I've had a lot of mentors because I lived in California for 15 years. And um, one of them said, you know, uh, learn from a master become a master and pass it on and yeah. so when you know what you're not doing anybody any favors to sit on what you've learned to negotiate this world and the other thing this master his name's Milton Katsellas he's passed on he used to say um oh God, I, I've just distracted myself sorry what did Milton say um he used to say uh you, okay, you dream, you've got to be able to, how can I put this? I'm trying to get his, I can hear his voice. You don't need anybody for your dream. Yeah. Stamp your own passport. That's what I was taught by a Greek man in California 25 years ago. I was with him for six years as a student in his, 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 his acting class, but it was a lifestyle. Stamp yeah. your own passport. Stamp your own yeah. passport. So I'm thrilled when I'm able to collaborate with people. You know, a lot yeah. of acting jobs, Buffy, all of that is collaboration, right? Yeah. But as I've gotten older and I've become more aware of what I'd like to leave behind, because I'm getting to the age where legacy, it's not about how many covers of magazines will come on, because it gets old, it's sweet, but it gets old and you get old and you don't get them anymore, so there is that. <laughs> 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 but it's about like, what do I want to leave behind? And now I'm more conscious about what I want to leave behind. I have to collaborate with different people. I have to, ha I have to have people who write things that I can tolerate saying. And if, yeah. and, and if I became a writer by accident, and if I'm not <laughs> finding that, then I'm going to have to start writing. And, that, and that's why I do, you know? Um, doing a segue over to Anthony, Jimmy McGovern, has written the yeah. most incredible gift called Anthony. Yeah. But we, have, a family has paid a high price for this story, as we all know. Lady, <laughs> Lady G. Walker, we need to pray for her. The story is the life that Anthony would have had. But I accepted a part in the script for two reasons. Number one, yeah. Walker, period, Walker. They said Walker. Yeah. I said, yeah, 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 got it, I'm coming. Yeah. Walker. Yeah. All of them, all of them. When I say Walker, I mean Anthony, G, Dominique, Steph, Stephanie, Ad Infinitum, Steve, who's gone on to beyond. So I took the script for Walker. Yeah. I've always wanted to work with Jimmy McGovern. And he's an yeah. incredible writer. And he got it right. Yeah. But often, often, you read things... And you're like, oh, oh, you know what I mean? You're like, I'm not sure I want to contribute to that. I'm not sure I want to put that out there with my brown face and my brown skill and let people see it. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So it's, it's a strange one. But um, yeah. when, when you get something that is evocative and is, as difficult but as well done as Anthony's going to be, I'd yeah. do anything for G Walker, anything, you yeah. know, and, so, uh, go on, sorry. So, Anthony's going to be out on the 27th of 
27th of July. 27th of July, 8.30 BBC One. It's... BBC One, and we'll all be tuning in for that link. It's just... Just... The things that have happened in, in my lifetime, it would have been pretty close to me, to me, so... What age would that be? 30... Yeah, he's been so, gone 15 years and he was 18. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. So it's like, it's 10 minutes down the road. And it's like, the thing that, that something like that happened in, in our lifetime, how can that happen in our city, in our lifetime? How, you know, and it's one of them. It's, I, I, obviously, you know, we know this is going to be a hard watch. This is not going to be something easy to watch. And it's going to, we have been, I think, Don's gone out on our platform today um, talking about a few of the projects that she's went on, but she's the, the vice chair of the Andy Walker Foundation and put so much love to the whole family and to, to everybody because it's going to, like you say, when we talk about racism, it, it opens those old wounds and I just think it's going to open those wounds to everyone, but well, it's something that we need to talk about now. Yeah, but it's... um. They paid a huge price for this film we're going to watch. You know, they paid an unpayable yeah. price. And yeah. they've gone on to do such wonderful... Oh, gosh. Such wonderful, life-altering, world-altering work with the result of this yeah. tragedy. And what I'd, I'd like to say is that we've just got to pray for them. We've got to lift them up. Um, I... It, it's going to hurt. While we're yeah. watching telly on Monday, just know that that's a family that's going to be in pain. You know, no matter how great and wonderful it is, and um, it's a celebration of his life. It's an it's yeah. an exciting celebration of his life. It's shown yeah. us the life he would have lived. And I heard G this morning on Radio Four saying that um, she wanted to show what loss was like, and then Jimmy McGovern yeah. said the only way. He could show what what loss was like was to show us the life that he could have had and now obviously it's only a 90 minute span and so yeah. it's only a 90 minute span so there's certain key moments of things that would have happened in his life that they've imagined yeah. it's poignant uh, it's yeah. poignant i mean i'm just a tiny cog in the wheel i would have done anything i would have brought them tea and biscuits you know what i mean i was like yo yeah. you're not bringing this out from my friend my friend and her daughter yeah and I'm not involved. I fought. I was yeah. like, I gotta get in there. So. A hundred percent. And you just, so it's, it's that support the thing. That's all, all we, we can never know what that is like. We can never, like, and you know, we can never live that, but we can just be there. And you know, as you say, but I only know Dom and she's just achieved so many amazing things, but the campaigning and the work that they do, but also the dignity that they carry themselves with, like, even from day one when that was on the media, I just remember saying, how can we, how can you carry yourself with such dignity? How? Like, because I know that, like, with the best film I just know what my response was at the time and how angry I felt when I was it. For that to actually be your family and for that to be your blood and that to be your everything. The just to this day, I just so much love for the family because they're just, just amazing and they work. The work that they do is just inspiring. Yes. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much. So just on one final note. Yes. We talked we talked a lot and a lot of what we talked about is tied in with Black Lives Matter and it's tied in with the way that you're doing, which is like you said, it's a form of campaign and it's as I think intellectual activism because <laughs> No it is. No, I suppose so. Thank so, you. That's very well, kind. Well, definitely. Blue Sky Thinking, when, if we achieve what we want to, particularly in this region, what's the hints that we get from all this campaigning and all this work that we're all doing to try and improve Black Lives and Merseyside? Oh, that's...
it's so big. You know that's so big. That's like unfair. I gosh, it starts with. I want male equality more than anything else. Black men equality. I know that sounds bizarre, but the man is kind of the centre of the household, and I've seen a lot of black males struggle around me in my own family and above and beyond and around and around. I'd like to have plentiful opportunities, particularly for men, for fathers. I don't know why I say that, but I suppose, I mean, George is the one getting his life squeezed out of it. I know there's Brianna Taylor and there's all the women, but I, I think that it's particularly, it can be particularly tough for men, our men. You know, that like, sounds like I'm saying, oh, man. But I mean, our, our men, I think it's very tough for our men, our brothers, our lovers, yeah. our fathers, etc. Um, I think, I think, I find it hard for men here. You know, I, I, I've had a lot of difficulty. I've had a lot of success in Liverpool, and that's probably what people see the most. But I've had a lot of difficulties in Liverpool too. But... I, what I've gone through, some of it was self-created by being outspoken and people stepping back from me and things like that. But yeah. but there's a lot of people who haven't even been able to get off the starters blocks. So yeah. I think there has to be something on a grassroots level that yeah. helps men. Of course we're going to help boys. We're on that. The girls have got that if we have to. We're helping our boys along as we're raising them. But I'm talking about yeah. men now who are my age, who are 30, yeah. who haven't worked, yeah. who haven't got opportunities. That's self, it's debilitating. Yeah. One, of, one of the main reasons yeah. I write also is because I finally learned a trick, okay? This is Fina's trick. If I have a pen in my hand, I'm not unemployed. Yeah. I'm not unemployed. As soon as I hold okay. a pen, I'm not unemployed. That's it. Yeah. So I'll have to learn how to do this and do that and do this and do that. But I want something somewhere. I, I'm not a man, but I know men need to work. They need to be able to bring home a legal dollar and give it to the woman. If we can get the men sorted, we'll all, we'll all get the effects of that. That's what I'd say. Blue sky thinking. I hope that wasn't too vague. I mean, you know, the book, Yakubo, the book, Yakubo on lockdown and football started about young black boys. Unfortunately, the film was about the murder of a just turned black man. Yeah. And so I would say the, the, the BLM resurfaced because of the death of a black man. I say at this moment, even though we know say a name, say a name, our brothers need help. That's what I'd say. I want the money to go to the brothers, to providing work for the brothers, training for the brothers, opportunity to open their own business, like empowerment, like you know, do you know that adage, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day? Teach yeah. him how to fish, he'll eat forever. I want the money, the awareness from this current BLM campaign to teach our brothers to fish so they'll eat forever. It's, it's great to hear different perspectives, and as you say, in terms of violence behaviour, it's more likely to be men who are... Oh, every racial identity is different from everyone experiences. If we break down racial identities, every one of us experiences a different version of discrimination. So black women, black trans people, black, it's different. But in terms of black men, it's likely to be more violent. It's violent. Like, uh, it's violent. It's scary. It can be so scary. It's life ending. Let's just keep it keep it 100, as they say. It's life ending. You know, I, yeah. want, I want our brothers helped and, helped and, and nourished. I want our boys nourished. That's what I want out of this. I want our boys nourished. Listen, the black women, sometimes our sexuality, the fact that they fancy her, can get you over it a little bit. Let's just keep it real. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you get help because you're a woman and all of that. But I want our boys, our men, to have something that's lasting so that they can then feel proud of themselves. And please don't mishear me. I'm not saying our black men haven't got things. There's loads of black men in this city that I could name that have got great education, great, great businesses, you know, doing slave tours, writing books, doing all manner of things. But I think as our community goes, that's the area I'd like to raise. Thank you. I think it's great hearing your views and it's great knowing what's different because every time I ask my question, I get a different answer. So it's like, it is, it's that process of breaking it down. And particularly like a big thing for us is men's mental health. That's 
that's what, that's what I'm saying. That's part of making up. If you give a, a black man a job who's been unemployed all his life, trust me, his mental health, if it hasn't degraded too far, will improve. Immediately. Immediately. A lot of the problem is socioeconomic, financial. How can you keep looking at you, woman, if you can't give her 50 pounds? It doesn't work. Don't, don't even get me started. You know what I mean? we got to find a way for the boys, the boys to get theirs, the men to get theirs. You know? That's what we need, I think, because it they're the center of our family. Instead of, instead of it being um, matriarchal, matriarchal, we need it to be go back to being patriarchal for their sake, I think. I don't care if that's not feminist. I really don't care. Sue me. I agree to an extent, and like I said, you definitely, I like to hear views, and I like to, you know, we can't leave Black Men behind, but like, I, I do, I didn't go with like, I grew up. I grew up with a matriarchal. That's exactly what. That's why I know what I'm saying. Because I know. I know what I've needed as I've gone through life. I know that um, my relationships with men would be different if there was a man in my home for me to start relating to in the first place, instead of it being guesswork. Do you understand? Yeah, men hold it all in. Men hold it all in. You can't even get a man. To, you can't even get a certain type of man to go to the doctor. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I mean, listen. You ask me, blue sky thinking one thing. There's loads of things. Yeah. But that I mean, you you also got me off cuff. That's what I'm thinking about at the moment. Obviously, I'm very male centered. I've got a male. I'm raising a black man. I've got a male in me home that I'm trying to mold and trying to help. You know. Um, so that's why I'm, yeah. I'm thinking along those lines. Uh, yeah, I'm in a house full of men, I'm, I'm outnumbered the 18, and I've got two boys and a husband. And Amen. I'm like, wow, this happened. I know. I'm in a house full of women. I know. I, I know. I mean, for, I feel, yeah. when I was married, it was the same thing. It was me, my husband, and the boy. You know, I, it's like, huh? It, it flipped. <laughs> it flipped. I was when I was growing up. It was me and my mum, my sisters, and my brother. So it was all basically all women and one boy. Now, and then it's the other way now. But hey, yeah. Um, so yes, uh, I'm getting good reviews. It's on Amazon. Jacobo Jacobo, football star is book one. It, that came out in May, and it was it had a baby straight away because of all the civil unrest. And there's also now Jacobo yeah. Jacobo on lockdown. That's book two. Both are available yeah. on Fina Aruche at Amazon or Amazon Fina Aruche. Just Google, Google, Google. And if you want to talk to me about yeah. anything, um, I'm on Facebook at Fina Aruche. I'm on Instagram also at Fina Aruche. I'm on Twitter, barely. Hate hate that platform. At Fina Aruche One. Thank you so yeah. much, Chantel. I, 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 I was. Go on. Go on. I was, I was just, just going to say, it's been a pleasure and obviously I'm following you on everything because I love you. <laughs> I, I was going to, I was going to try and be like demure. My hope, look at me, I'm sitting in pink. I was going to try and yeah. be demure and ladylike and have me hands crossed. It's, yeah. what we're talking about is too important. 100%. It's too important. And what you're doing is very important, you know? Thank you. Thank you for Thank you. for doing what you're doing. And I, I know when you do it on your own little platform, sometimes it feels like it's really insignificant and you're going, God, who cares? Who knows? Who's noticing? Yeah. I'm noticing. Yeah. The little girl in, the little girl in Preston's noticing. You know, um, there's a girl in Rochester, New York, that's noticing. There's a lad yeah. in, who knows, that's noticing. You have no yeah. idea that this internet's so powerful. And we may as well use it for something positive. So I want to thank you so much for, for, for doing what you do, for taking the risks, for going to Stoke, for going on marches, for raising your boys, you know, all of that. Um, yeah. But remember to rest you too. Uh, <laughs> I 
I know, but it, it, but oh, yeah. I think the, my, my final thing is a large part of mental health. When I was at when I ran up front for two years, I did absolutely yeah. everything. I was the producer, and I was the thing, and and I got so burnt out that yeah. my mind wasn't great for about two years after. Yeah. It took a lot out of me because you hear all the yeah. racial story. So you're not just dealing with your own racial trauma. You're then dealing with the yeah. racial trauma of what everyone's telling you. Then you're noticing things that you didn't notice before. Then you're running around yeah. doing things. So it kind of multiplies and you've got to be yeah. careful. You know, I sent yeah. somebody, one of the major, major, major women in our community who's done nothing but support me. I said to her about the BLM, I sent her something and she sent me back something rude. And I went, it was so out of context. And then a couple of minutes later, she called me and she said, I'm so sorry, I'm just tired. You yeah. know what I mean? And we get tired. Yeah. It's okay to get yeah. tired. I love her, yeah. she loves me, we're good, we move past it. But we get tired. Yeah. So we, within this warrior woman and this yeah. you know, fist in the air woman, I'm yeah. planting lavender around my house. I'm laying in the back garden. Some people, I think people have a perception that I never stop working. I feel like I never do anything <laughs> because I, I've got... <laughs> My work, my work life balance has yeah. improved greatly because it's had to, and I'd like the same for you, Miss Chantel, so that we can have this conversation. No, we need you. So we can have this conversation in 5, 10, 15, so that you la you can stay yeah. the distance, you can last the course. Does that make sense? Yeah. Don't let, yeah. Don't let this burn you out. Don't get burnt out. Thank you, Fina. I definitely needed to hear that. Thank you so much. You just... Everything about this conversation has made my day. Like, I my day starts off one way, and hopefully, thanks to speaking to you and just you being an absolute inspirational goddess, yeah. I, I feel so much better. So, all I can say is thank you so much, Venus. Thank you. Thank you.